Hello everyone and welcome to another episode of Aussie Tech Heads, episode 298 this week on the, what is it this week, the 12th of July. Jeez, this month's half gone already. What's going on? Well, yes, yeah, so welcome. Welcome Lounge, live.thesecrethub.com and welcome Eric and Will. How are you guys going? Hi mate, how are you going? Yeah, not too bad, thanks. Uh, what how are we you? gents? Yeah, good Will, good. And uh, Eric, what's been going on this week? Keeping busy? I imagine. Uh, I have been a little bit busy, yes. Um, if my audio is a bit funny, let me know, please. Um, no, it's been it's been okay. No complaints. Good. Good. All, all good. That's good. And uh, Will, battery man, all good. <laughs> uh, it's been interesting, interesting week. The weather the weather helps. It, it only rains when I get out of the vehicle to do a battery. When I'm actually in the car, it uh, it's it sunny. Rain. Oh, it's good. That's how it's supposed <laughs> to work. All right. So as I said before, we we go live Thursday nights, live.thesecrethub.com. If you want to watch the live recording of the show, otherwise you can get you on the youtube.com forward slash... Uh, oh no, well, we've got a new address, hasn't we? We've got video.aussietechheads.com.au. That's right. That's right indeed. Uh, or you could also just go up to the aussietechheads.com.au webpage, click on the video. It's right on the front page. Uh, call in live through the show. Skype, dot, uh, Skype is the handle. You can also get a little paper downloaded to your iPad. It's uh, paper.aussietechheads.com.au. It's pretty good. It's uh, so just various stories from around the place, not just all tech. It's uh, entertainment and all this sort of stuff. Nifty little app that produces all that out for us. So uh, that's good. Paper.li, I think it's called. It's really good. Good good, good quality appsmanship <laughs> there. And uh, as always, techwebcast.info replayed before the show at 7 o'clock. All right. A uh, bit of news this week. Not too much. I found it, um, oh, once again, a bit of Apple-driven week. I don't know about everyone else, but uh, I don't know what it is about Apple, but they just know how to get the headlines, don't they? Mm-hmm. Um, but anyway, uh, what's, what else has been going on from my end? Yeah, the hosting, hosting.aussietechheads.com.au is great. It's all up and running. It's all automated. And, uh, yeah, go and check that out. If you, if you want hosting or domain registration, look, we're working on some, working on some deals for you guys. So we'll, uh, we'll put some deals together and uh, special listener deals how's that sound pretty good to me you got you got my oh, did you get yeah, my you money yet me, mate you could have told me that before i went to the trouble <laughs> signing up <laughs> oh yeah that's right there's no there's no there's no um no uh, staff discounts but <laughs> listeners get discounts that's right uh yeah i got everything from you eric i think yeah got my money you spent it yet oh it's finished it's, it went three seconds after it come in <laughs> gone <laughs> That's right. Paid the bills for this month. All right. <clears throat> yeah. So, um, so have you ever thought about uh, setting up your own website? There you go. Jump onto the, uh, hosting. dot Sign up. You can get a domain name, a dot com or a dot au if you've got an ABN number, and uh, away you go. Set up a WordPress or a Joomla. Maybe not a WordPress, because there's a story about WordPress tonight. Did you guys? We might as well kick kick into it with the kick it off. Kick it off with the WordPress uh, story. Um, fifty thousand. WordPress sites are compromised through this uh, through the week, as part of a sustained iframe injection. Wow! Attack campaign targeting vulnerable plugins uh, for the web servers and content management systems. Attackers targeted holes in a string of plugins for the uh, blogging software, such as WordPress, including Tim Thumb, uh, Uploadify, and PHP My Admin. Now that last one is a scary one for me, but um, look, I don't run run WordPress. But if you are a WordPress host, I would imagine going into the back end and making sure you're up to date with all your little um, security well, patches. Well, that's what I was, I was about to say. Part of the problem with WordPress is you've got to update it every second day. There's an update for the thing. If You know, you've got yeah. to stay on top of it. Yeah. That's yeah. what I hear about it too. Oh, okay. Too many updates. Look, I've run uh, my site, the Aussie Tech Head sites, off a Joomla, a content management called Joomla. And look, that has, that has a few updates, but I suppose what doesn't? Like tonight, my computer, Microsoft, 40-minute update. Thanks. Thanks for that. And, uh, but what, what you need updates because there's security, security leaks everywhere, and when they're identified, that's why you have the updates. And look, with, with my site, yeah, I'm not doing it every day. Maybe it's a bit less than WordPress. Um, mine might, might be once every month, maybe, something like that. Depends what happens, I guess. Yeah, that's okay. That's manageable. When it's literally every day or every second day, it's ridiculous. Yeah, yeah, but yeah, that that um, PHP my admin uh, one there that the the Apple it's not an app, but the that was attacked as well. So that's pretty bad because that controls all your database and all that sort of stuff. And that once you get into there, you corrupt your database or extract the data from it. Yeah, you could be in a world of pain. 
give you the, give the keys to the Greek grief factory going. Open up the door. <laughs> Go on. <laughs> but uh, yeah, so so that was that one. And uh, what else did we what else did we come across? Oh, Wikipedia. Oh, don't we love Wikipedia? Um, they're, they're trying to expand. You know, they're trying to they're trying to get their articles good and all this sort of stuff. And uh, look, I suppose, would you suggest would or would you concur that they're probably uh, just as as usable running out as, of money? Oh yeah, but like, but as uh, say Encyclopedia Britannica, most people would go to Wikipedia, wouldn't they? Schools and all that. Like, is there any reason? Well, it's usually the top couple of results as soon as you search for something. Wikipedia is usually right there, so. Hmm. Yeah, that's right. So look, it's obviously very popular. Probably not the most accurate, um, but but it, oh, look, I, I reckon what accuracy? I reckon it'd have to be high ninety percent, wouldn't it? Oh, I think it's pretty accurate. Yeah, I, I have a fairly um, um, you know, volunteer based um fact checkers and whatnot. So I th- I think it's reasonably accurate. Mm. They w- yeah, they've just implemented a new system where um, users can submit requests to have articles changed. So, because traditionally you need to be a moderator to change an, artic- an article on a particular thing, but now if you notice something's wrong, you can, yeah, request to have it get changed and they'll contact you and get the correct information from you. So, yeah. So, uh, yeah, that's right, Nick. I've got a little screenshot here somewhere. If we can get the screenshot going. Yeah, so, uh, but Wikipedia, like, um, you get a, you get this as an example of a site, the Golden Crowned Sparrow. Now, <laughs> once you come all the way down to the bottom here, Ooh, there we go, and there's a... Couldn't you come up with anything more interesting <laughs> than that? <laughs> <laughs> well, that's where the... That's scary when that's in your bookmarks. <laughs> that's where the... Uh... <laughs> <laughs> That's where the the uh, this little box is down the bottom of the article. Uh, help improve this page. Do you find what you are looking for? Yes. Uh, great. Would you like to add a comment? Or and or if you go no, if you go, did you find what you were looking for? No. Sorry about that. Any suggestion for improvement? So look, it they, they looks like they're trying their hardest. But I remember oh, years ago now uh, they wouldn't let us have a page. Uh, we tried to we put a page you, you- up. You can't, you can't certify your own page, whether it's yourself or a company. Right. Or whatever. You have right. to have somebody not associated with it to give an impartial page. So what normally happens is a friend of a friend of a friend does it for you. Yeah, it still didn't <laughs> work because we had a listener who went to um, oh, a lot of trouble, did a really nice page. And then the moderator, some little boffin, four-eyed git, yeah. took it down and said, oh, So change all that now. Oh, because there wasn't enough. Yeah, I don't understand because um, you didn't put it up, so you know. Yeah, the the um, problem was there was not enough verification or something. Like mm. we didn't have enough links out on the internet to say to, uh-huh. that link to us and all this. What sort five of... years of a podcast ain't good enough? Yeah, well, when we were putting it up, we were trying to put it up probably in the first year or two. So maybe we right. could have another go now. You know, see right. what goes on. All 12 people on the, who are listening on the stream, get out there now and go and do it. By the end of the show, we'll have a certified page. That's right. That's right. And, or, or, and be nice. Or one of the, be nice to us. Or one of the thousands that listen on the, on the podcast. Just, uh, yeah, g- give, us a, give us a wrap <laughs> on the Wikipedia. But uh, since 2010, Wikipedia deployed its article feedback tool, which in its current version 4 version features a rating at the bottom of the article. Readers can rate a page on a scale from 1 to 5. Um, the, so V4 version 4 had its limitations uh, of the amount of input it provided the authors. Now, new version 5, which we just saw, is now at the bottom of some articles, apparently only 3% or something, and then later on, uh, later this month or you know, coming up in the coming months, it's going to try and that little version 5 will appear on about 10% of the pages. That's why the Golden Crown Sparrow had it at the bottom of the page. I didn't want to go look them too, for too long. Plus, it was the page in the in the story, so it was it was good link to in the story, nice and easy. Uh, all right, so that's enough of uh, the good old Golden Crown Sparrow. There he is. He looks all right, that bird actually. All right, now uh, <laughs> looks tasty. <laughs> <laughs> <That's right>. <laughs> <laughs> looks tasty, eh, Gordy? Now Apple iPad. Now there's a few Apple stories here this week and i'm not sure i haven't actually had a look what eric's stories he pulled out this week but did you have any apple stories eric it's my first story glenn oh i, th- I thought your first story was a kogan oh no it isn't it's a cool factor all right well you go you want to go with that 
I'll go with this. The cool factor weighs against Apple in lawsuit. Samsung's Sam, Sam I've said Samson. Samson and Delilah. I thought that's a different um, generation altogether. Samsung's Galaxy tablet is not cool enough to be confused with Apple's iPad, a British judge has ruled. The US electronics giant had argued the Samsung Samsung Galaxy Tab was too similar to their product, but the claim was dismissed in the High Court. Um, the judge said, quote, they do not have the same understated and extreme simplicity which is possessed by the Apple design. They are not as cool, end quote. There you go. What do we think of that? So they're not as cool. Oh, I don't know. Um, I agree. Just to, just to throw the spanner in the works there, I agree. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. They, they, the, the iPad, look, the iPad is my device. So call me biased after. But look, I've used both. I've used it. I just like the iPad. I'm sorry. That, that is my device. That's my device of choice. So you're agreeing with, with Judge Colin Bliss? Yeah, look, I don't know. So he's saying that it's too, that it argued it was too similar to their product, but claim was dismissed. Okay, they don't. No, 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 no. no, you're saying that it's not similar enough because it's not because the Samsung tablet is not that cool, so it cannot be mistaken for an iPad. Hence, I dismiss the case. Uh, but has as cool uh, as in uh, as in looks? <laughs> is this what we're that's very doing? superficial, isn't it? Like it's. A, I know. I know. Well, like, it's not really. Yeah, you well. It's a, it's based on aesthetics. He's looking looking at the because that, that's that's what Apple's suit was. That is saying it looks exactly like ours, and the judge has said no, it doesn't, because right. yours is cool and theirs isn't. <laughs> so how can it be mistaken? Well, I don't know. I don't think that when it comes down to perceptions of an individual, is that is that a good basis to correct? To rule it, on? Well, that's his interpretation. It's it's yeah. a very it's not an objective statement mm. because we all have different tastes. And if someone likes an Android, well, more fool them, or more good, or good, good luck to them. Yeah, depending right. on what side of the fence you're on. Yeah, yeah, that's right. I, yeah, uh, I think yeah, it's it's a bit harsh for a judgment to be. I mean, it either looks the same or it doesn't. You know, like you, you, if you start throwing personal opinions into a, you know, to a judgment, like well, that's right. Where's that going to end? So what? So you think that maybe it should have. More, more settled on you know they should have got the ruler out, measured it all up, and it oh I don't same. know. It looks the same because it has a round button on the face, but so, you know, like it's thicker, it's slightly thicker, it's heavier. It's they don't it's look different. the same. They don't look the same. You, you're not going to mistake them, you know, like <laughs> yeah. To a guy, to a guy that's fallen over and had his eyes poked out, they probably look the same, but they don't look the same. Well, he probably <laughs> fell over and poked them out on the edges of the. <laughs> Look, the, the Samsung's too small. Well, anyway, but anyway, that's just that's rubbish. That's just rubbish. Doesn't matter. I would never buy uh, an Android tablet. So to me, it means little. The uh, Apple, the Apple iPad. Speaking of the iPad, gets the Google Plus app with Hangouts. So the free app, which was designed specifically for iPad users, can access and make changes to Google Plus, update stream files, profile, friends, circles, and account settings. It also lets let them make comments, expand and reshare posts, as well as upload photos and videos directly from the iPad. That's all go. Before the I love the way that when they're talking about an Apple um, program like, or an iPod, you know, iPad program or whatever, iPad app, they have to mention free in the article. Um, it's it's <laughs> oh, not what? a given that it's going to be a free app. Yeah, but from Google, <coughs> excuse me, from Google. Uh, most of theirs are free anyway, aren't they? Before yeah, the- yeah, but that's what I mean. It's just funny that I think it's just it's such a uh, habit mm. for writers now when they're talking about you know oh. iOS devices to add free into the equation. Whereas it's funny where you, you read an article about an Android app and they never mention it unless it's you know more than a couple of dollars they never mention that it costs anything because they're so used to them being free oh so. we, you know you know how much these journos love adjectives they're abje- <laughs> a- adjective lovers <laughs> so the before the dedi- You're an objective lover eh? <laughs> <laughs> before the dedicated ipad app users had to use the iphone app you know how you do the times two and the graphics look amazing yes, and it looks poxy yeah it looks it looks great yeah. um so the has the ability to join a google hangout 
with a few friends, group, blah, blah, blah. We all know what that is. And also included in the Google Plus app for the phone is a new feature called Events on Google Plus. This feature was announced... Oh, la- I don't know what that is. No, this feature was announced late last month on the Google I.O. developer conference in San Francisco. It's designed to let users set up parties, reunions, and other social functions by providing tools mm. for invitations and posting photos during and after the event. So that would be good. It's We're- basically the event thing that's on Facebook, pretty much. Mm. So yes, that's- correct. So that'd be trying good. To, trying to copy Facebook. Mm. So I'll tell you what, they're getting there. They're not, not that far away. Oh, yeah, but you know what? I still don't reckon people are going to use Google Plus as often as they use Facebook. It's Facebook's got funny. traction. It has. And it's funny because I was speaking to a friend of mine on the weekend and I said, Do you use Google Hangouts? And he goes, Oh, no, I don't trust them with my information. And I went, Hang well, on a That's second. a general so, feeling about Google generally, though. And so I jumped onto his Facebook page and he had his name, his address, his phone number, his email address, everything on his Facebook page. I'm like, Mm. what's the difference? (laughs) Yeah, Yeah, I think, well, for me, the difference is if I put some information on Facebook, it's because I want it to be known or not known. On Google, you might not want it to be known, but there's a chance they're going to release it anyway. Yeah. That's, that's That's my... perception of the difference well someone was telling me through the week i don't know if you guys have heard about it but facebook are going to start charging uh for um so you know when if you like something from a from a company and then right. it, it may not necessarily appear their posts may not necessarily appear in your in your mm. in your news feed but there the is the fact a, that you like something yeah but there is right. a there is a function where you can force these things to appear in the news feed, and apparently Facebook is going to start charging the companies money uh, to to turn this function on. So the for, for, forcing the post, forcing the post. Yeah, it's out called there. an announcement. Um, it's something I've actually had. I've had it enabled on my page for ages. And if I post something, I can announce something, um, which basically means if I post it, as you said, if it's a link or something, it may not go to everybody's page. If I announce it. It goes, goes to everybody on my list. Right. Um, it does cost. Yeah, I had the first month or something was free. Now, if I go to announce something, it does cost me. I think it was. Um, it's based on the amount of followers and the how often you do it. I can't remember the exact price, but it's actually quite expensive. It was like twelve pound or something. Well, what for one announcement? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, right. Yeah, that's a bit too much. But I think the idea yeah. is if you're a company that's got 150 million followers, you know, um, it's probably not a bad investment, really. Mm. Yeah, because I think they try because these companies that had pages were basically getting free advertising, let's face it. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Um, all right, yes. hang on a sec. I've just, I've just read the chat room. I've just got to remove a banner. Oh, there finally. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> it's only been up there for 45 minutes. Well... <laughs> Well, look, for some reason, though, look, and I don't know what it is, but uh, look, I've got the stream, I've got the uh, stream on my laptop here where I can, I've got the chat room underneath it and I've paused the stream for obvious reasons because I don't want it to, you know, be playing and making a noise. But for some reason, the chat room doesn't update live. I've got to tap, tap it to, for it to <laughs> update. So anyway, but it's, it's gone so now. the chat room too. <laughs> yeah, it's gone now anyway. Uh, all right, so now let's get moving on to bigger and better things. As I said, it was a, a bit of a little Apple week, and Eric's probably got a bit more of an idea about these ones. Um, we did mention this earlier on in the year, but the the Lion-powered Macs, uh, some Lion-powered Macs won't upgrade to OS X Mountain Lion. So uh, there's a... Correct. Anything that's five years old or more. Yeah, there, look, there, there is. If you've got an old Mac, I've got a. There's a. There's a link in the show notes, and it goes to the web page, to a, to the Mac web page, and just about down there. Yeah, so make sure your Mac can run Mountain Lion. Blah blah blah. Your Mac must be one of the following models: iMac mid two thousand seven, MacBook two thousand eight. Blah blah blah. So it's all there. Uh, so you know. So OS X Mountain Lion Lion might not be for everyone, and. Uh, I don't know many people that have got a five-year-old Max. No. I have an iMac. It's so cute. Is it five years old? <laughs> it's about 15 years old. Well, you win. 
<laughs> it's you know the original IMAX. The oh, those the the, the color the the colored ones. Yeah, one of those. Oh god, yeah. Well, well, I don't think you'll be upgrading it. <laughs> I think they were running on OS OS five, something like that. I uh, went up to like thought, six point five or something, I think, and that was as far as it went. I thought they were I thought they were running on AppleSoft, but anyway. Yeah. <laughs> I thought they were all DOS based. <laughs> yeah, that's right. They remember the hey, little the cursor for their. At DOS? least the mouse still works. Well, I've got a power. Oh, they were the <laughs> worst <laughs> mouse <mouse-ish laughs> in the world. It still works because it's never been used. It's had a normal mouse plugged in its entire life. <laughs> well, I've got a power PC, and uh, look, I'm. It's what do you do with it? Like it still works. It just chuck it out, mate. Yeah, but it seems that it's a shame because you can't upgrade Don't it. Donate yeah. it. That's, hey, that's our next prize. When you send in a review to Aussie Tech Heads, you'll <laughs> you get that and the Britney Spears CD because that's probably the only thing you can do with it. You that's can right. play it on it. <laughs> Look, I've, I've been talking to a few people through the week by email and I've said, hey, listen, thanks for contacting, blah, blah, blah. Do you want a Britney Spears CD? Nah. <laughs> they hang up. Hello? You still there? Hello? Hello? <laughs> but, uh, but yeah, but... What are you trying to force feed people that for? <laughs> but the kids were using. It. I thought, oh, this is a great machine for the kids and all this. You know, this is great. It's all, it's great. But um, but now, like as as things progress, like these browsers, the Firefox, that that doesn't upgrade. So therefore, Flash doesn't work on it anymore. And all the kids do is play like ABC Flash games and stuff. So <laughs> that's no good. But there was another story here about all that sort of stuff. About there was. Um, we might come to that in a sec when I find it. But there's something well, speaking of uh, Flash and Firefox and things like that, you see what uh, Kogan did last week to in the Explorer 7 users. They uh, put a big banner up on their webpage basically saying, it, appear- it appears your system administrator has been in a coma for over five years and you're still using IE7. To help make the internet a better place, you'll be charged a 6.8% tax on your purchase from Kogan. This page, this is necessary due to the amount of time required to make your web page appear correctly. If to avoid the tax, please use Chrome, Firefox, Safari, or Opera. And <laughs> so, basically, if you ordered with IE seven or earlier, they charge you six point eight on top of all your mm. purchases. Now, this week, Microsoft said, "Well, we don't think that's very fair." So they they removed all Kogan. Searches from Bing. You know uh, what? I don't think so. That's... What? <laughs> that's right. Yeah, exactly. So what? It's like saying, you know what? If you don't do, if you don't take that off, um, you're not allowed to mow the lawn anymore. <laughs> oh, okay then. Sorry about that. I'll oh, give me a break. But how, 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 yeah, I know. Why is this I, so? I, I, like, what, is it has it been proven that this is what's happened? Well, that's What's what that? Microsoft announced that they they took Kogan off the search results. Well, yeah. from Bing. well, I can't. So what? I, look, I can't. Everyone searches Google anyway. Well, this is true, yeah. but to come out and, and everybody who's using Chrome, Firefox, Safari, or Opera is using Google, so it doesn't there you really go. matter. <laughs> but I don't that's know. That's right. I just thought. All right, hands I up in the chat right. room. In the chat room, <laughs> everyone just put the number one in the box here. If um, if you use anything other than Google. To search for anything, and we'll keep actually, talking. And we'll we'll tally it up. I actually used Bing last night because it is the default search engine for views torrenting software. So for who? For what? <laughs> views for the BitTorrent client. <laughs> Hang on a minute. Hang on a minute. Someone said no, Roger, whoever you are. Nice to <laughs> nice to have you here. Um, that you you put the number one if you if because you've used something other than Google is this correct yes or no? So what I'd like to know and and I think that it's a, it's a oh I don't know I don't think it's right that that Bing can just remove someone like that I think that could be against some sort of economic trade, practice. trade practices act exactly I probably. don't probably yeah, I don't know and if this is going to be acceptable. Kogan would probably care if they didn't experience huge amounts of traffic influx and purchases. But you know what the funny thing is? It's the best publicity that they've had all year. Yeah, they've had to pay for it. <laughs> and they've got their extra 7% for the people who've had the use That's it, right. So. That's right. So it's a win-win. We make more money. We're getting free promotion, and everyone's using Google anyway. So and sorry, Microsoft. Microsoft. It, so they're going right. to keep talking about it. So once again, Microsoft, yeah, are on the ball, buddy. <laughs> 
<laughs> yeah, but that's right. You're right. It's um, no. Who uses Bing? Fair income. Roger apparently. Roger, Roger uses, uses Bing. Well, Bing looks is that, nice. Is that you, Steve Bormer? Come on, <laughs> is that you? But anyway, Google, oh, Google, uh, also talking about browsers and so forth. Google's to also pull Chrome plug on OS X Leopard. So I mentioned before with my Power PC, the uh, Firefox that doesn't get updated anymore, and Google now is going to pull the uh, updates for Google Chrome running on OS X ten point five, or also known as Leopard, after it releases version twenty one in the coming months. So, so no, no, is that saying no, no audio, no updates for Chrome stuff on OS X ten point five, and ten point five and below, or ten point five and above? Uh, ten point five and below. Right. Okay. Yep. So they're okay. just they're just moving forward. That's basically what what model is that? That's um, Leopard. Leopard. Oh, that's ages yeah. ago. That's two thousand and seven. Yeah. So the, the five new, years old. The yeah. new feature includes fixes and stability updates. Apple has not patched security vulnerabilities in Leopard since November 2011, and its last security update in May 2012 did not patch any uh, vulnerabilities uh, in it. Instead, it simply disabled older copies of the Adobe Flash Player. So, so you just got to update. You got to update. Uh, so now, where were we here? Oh, yes. Now. Apple Mac OS X 10.8 arrives for devs. And Apple yesterday announced the availability of its developer version of the new Mountain Lion Gold Master. Mountain Lion will bring Siri-style dictation to MacBooks, iMacs, and Mac Pros, as well as messages, notes, uh, and reminders for seamless integration. woof be doo AirPlay mirroring will be available for matching a computer screen wirelessly with a TV. So that's yeah. cool. Yeah, I've tried that. That works a treat. Cool, cool. And, you know, I sat here reading this, this article here and I just read the next line and I just went, wow. US pricing has been set at 20 bucks. Yep. So there you go. It's $29 in Australia. I don't know why. No, 19 Oh, 20 oh, Okay, yep, yep. In Australia, yeah. Yeah. Even though it's dollar for dollar. But that's, see, it's $20 in the US plus tax. Yeah. They don't have to advertise their tax inclusive prices. Mm, mm. Because every every state has a different tax. I bought something from the Cayman Islands, charged me seven percent. Some Cayman Islands. Really? Pay. I had to look really? it up what it meant. It said uh, it was an A C A C tax or something. I went, what the hell is this? And uh, just made it up. Yeah. Just made it up. That's what I thought. But it's on everything. It's a GST, but it's it's. Oh, I said uh, basically the GST. Yeah, but it's because apparently... you're a non. Is it? Is it, I wonder if the Cayman Islands has got a GST on residents or is it just non-residents? Probably just non-residents. <laughs> no, it's, I think it's everyone because it's, I don't look, know if they've got enough population to have it on. I read a little. I read a little article on it because I didn't know what this tax was. I wanted to see what it was all about. This seven percent, and uh, yeah, it was a pretty much blanket across the board, seven percent all over the place. See you later. Right. Happy right. days. Uh, yeah. So so um, how do you? So you've got the the developer version. I had the can, what I what I did is when it first came out, I got the first two beaters. And put it on my machine. My machine it works pretty well. Um, and I just then I took it off, and then because I just wanted to wait for the final version, yeah, to come out. So um, so how'd you so go? This will be. How'd you go with the the Siri and stuff? Did you try that? No, out? that wasn't incorporated in the beaters yet. Oh right, okay. So so you you'd be able to put on the the Gold Master now. Ah uh, yes, I am. But I'm not. I'm going to wait until it's actually consumer release before I put it on. Okay, right, fair enough. Just because I usually have a couple of bugs, even with the Goldmaster. Yep, yep. All right, and uh, hopefully this might be the last Apple story. Oh no, there's two more. But Apple, they're on a they're on a new store blitz. Apparently, the company recently put out a second wave of advertisements on job job hunting, uh, in the Seek online Seek job hunting journal, the internet page, whatever you call it, uh, for retail specialists and geniuses. For new branches in Brisbane, South Perth, and South East Melbourne, it's also advertising for workers for an as yet unannounced new location in Canberra. There you go, all those little Canberrians, whoopie doos. It currently has fourteen stores around Australia, including eight in New South Wales. All right, now yes, you want to now just uh, I'm just it's just a backtrack. Does anyone want to hear about the Cayman Islands tax system? Y yes, why not? Okay. 
no direct taxation is imposed on residents and Cayman Island companies. So you got stung. The government <laughs> receives the majority of its income from indirect taxation. Duty is levied against most imported goods, such as cars, etc., at varying rates. Um, blah, 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 blah. A 10% government tax is placed on all the com- tourist accommodation. Right. In addition to $25 airport departure tax, which is built into the cost of the ticket. Well, where's my seven? There are no taxes on profits, capital gains, income, or any withholding taxes charged to foreign investors. There are no estate or death duties. I don't think, I think I'm going to move to this place. Sounds all right. Yeah. Well, I don't know what I, why I was charged 7%. I didn't hear you I mention. think that's a standard um, non-resident tax, probably because oh, you're yeah. a non-resident. Yeah, Yeah. right. I didn't I didn't read it that much. I just read a PDF of it, I think. But I got the first paragraph and went, yeah, it looks legit. So I was happy with that. Oh, it is legit. I think they've, yeah. just, they've got a range of taxes, but their residents don't pay it. Right, right. And uh, look, this, this, I think this is my last Apple story. And then I think we've got heaps of other stories. I know Eric's got a few lined up there, ready to come on. Uh, but Apple brings mobile payments to Australia. You can go into the Apple store, apparently, with your iPhone and scan the barcode of your Apple product and pay for it on your, on your phone and then walk out. Yep. That's yeah, they've cool. had that in the States for a while. 2011. Um, that was I'm what? just trying to work out how they're going to monitor that. Well, you just have a reference receipt number. Yeah, well, it's um, apparently a PDF receipt is emailed to you. So I suppose. Yeah. yeah. So well, it gets if you buy. Well, you've you've been there, Glenn. You buy something and they email it to you as you walk out the door, anyway. Yeah. So true. In, but this one is basically self serve now. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, right. the the hard thing I can would imagine would be because normally if you buy something, well, you're normally walking out in with it in a bag. Uh, yes, correct. So, so you can't get an Apple bag unless you've bought something. So that's that's mm. security enough, I suppose, unless you've kept an old Apple bag and walked in with it. Because they're not going to – well, that's right, but they're not going to stop everyone. You wouldn't think they're going to stop everyone and go, show me your email, show me your receipt. So, yeah. Well, there's, there's people at the door anyway. I think they, they keep a fairly close eye on what's going on. Yeah, yep. So, yeah, so they've launched the mobile payment system uh, for the Australian retail stores. The Easy Pay feature available within the Apple Store iOS app from this week. So therefore, it's, a, it's an app. So you download it. Yeah, and it allows customers to bypass the usual checkout process, blah, 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 as I said. Um, paying with a credit That's card. That's very efficient. Very efficient. They're going to make so much money because there's no lines. Yeah, well, that's right. That's right. But as you said, I'd be oh, a little bit, maybe a little bit worried but about the about theft. But obviously, it's working in the U.S. It was launched in the U.S. in late 2011. So, say it's been given a good six to eight months, you know. Um, yeah. Yeah, it's also been, uh, Apple, so it's also been rolled out in the UK and other regions. So, it's all, it's all going along strong. So, they must be happy with it. Well, here, I've got it. It's on, it's on the app now. I've got my app here now. Oh, yeah. Did, uh, did you Just have it or did you download it? No, no. I must have updated itself and it's, I just looked at the settings. So, you can see that. Nice. No, too bright. Just Hang tilt on. your phone back a little bit. Hang on. No, no, doesn't no. Know about it. can't see it. No, <laughs> no, it's too much light. I'll tell you a, a problem I've got with my iPad. I don't know if you'd be able to throw any light on it. Is um, the auto brightness doesn't work as far as I can see. Really? Yeah, like I've got to like I'm sitting there in the dark and I've got to turn it down manually because it's too bright. Oh, that's right. strange. That's strange. Mm, I've looked up on the internet and there's quite a few people carrying on about it. So whether or not. It's a, it's have you upgraded problem. it? Have you, you got the latest software? Yeah, I would have. Yeah, I would have. But anyway. Well, check it. Just, just check that. My nephews and, and uh, my sister, they've just got new iPads and um, they can't connect to their Wi-Fi. Well, maybe they should uh, sign up for an internet connection. <laughs> their iPhones work. <laughs> their iPhones work and their older iPad worked. But the new iPads, all three of them, won't work. That's bizarre, isn't it? You wonder if it's a, yeah. a router. You've got, if they, do they have an old router, I wonder? No, they've got really good Belkin, brand new. It's only three or four months old, okay. high-quality Belkin router. And one of the MacBook Pros won't connect. The brand-new Spanking one that he bought like a week ago won't connect, and his 12-month-old one does. Ironically, yeah. at his place, they go into his place, he's got an airport router, and guess what? It's they all connect. work perfectly. <laughs> oh, that's right. That's yeah, right. that might be just um, Apple's way of saying, well, you've got to buy one of ours now. Nah, no, look, <laughs> there's issues. There's issues. 
It could be issues with the router. It could be just a firmware update for the router. Yeah, it could be the wrong security uh, uh, setting. Might not Even be. Even if you turn it off, it still doesn't work. Mm. Oh, can they hook? Well, I'd try hooking up without any security CEO. Yeah, we did that. Yeah. <laughs> oh, well. Uh, let us know how you go. <laughs> right. Yeah. Now. Good, good luck with that. <laughs> Not well, my problem. Yeah. I didn't fork out a heap of money for three iPads I can't use. That's right. Yeah. Good. Now, um, Eric, you've got a little story here. Bill shock. Bill shocked in the news. Oh, look, again. I'd like to skip that for a minute because I've got I've got a funny one here. All right, you go. Well, I thought it was funny anyway. Microsoft CEO declares war on Apple. Considers a smartphone. <laughs> All right. Well, you're a bit late. <laughs> This post was originally published on Massive. Declaring a new era for the company, Microsoft CEO Steve, I don't know what I'm going on about, Bormer, said that the Surface tablet will rejuvenate Microsoft as it takes on Apple. And he didn't discount the possibility of a Microsoft-made smartphone. Yeah, you just go, you just, you do do that, mate. That's good. So, Yeah, dear, oh, dear, oh, dear. Oh, Stevie. What are you doing, Stevie. He's, like, He's lost a bit of weight, Bulma. Yeah, Good on you. Can't buy a BlackBerry and get them to make you one. Oh, <laughs> mm. uh, yeah, that's like last week, BlackBerry CEO saying nothing wrong with the company. Yeah, yeah we're making capes. What are you talking about? Yeah, yeah I don't well, know. And in, and in the same breath, he said we're sacking 5,000 people. <clears throat> Although, ironically, I just bought, I don't know if you can see this on the, where's the camera up there? This is a um, point of sale thermal printer and a uh, card reader. All right. Yeah, they're on yeah. sale at Officeworks. I thought, fantastic. They're normally three ninety nine down to twenty bucks. <laughs> yeah, okay. And a run, you know. They're a six month old product, they're an and a run. I thought, okay, good, no worries. Got it home and uh says nothing on the box. Got it home, looked at the specs. Requires Windows Mobile, Blackberry, or Nokia Symbian OS to run. Oh, <laughs> oh. Oh, you oh well, it. you're you're sweet then, Will. <laughs> I mean, I have one of each of those devices in the cupboard, but <laughs> the fact is, you know, they wondered why they couldn't sell them. Yeah. They're only six months old. They were launched six months ago, and they yeah. they sold none. We get all yeah, like- yeah, how would why would you launch something six months ago that runs <laughs> on Symbian? <laughs> oh my god! You could always it doesn't work on the new Windows Mobile. It's got to be like Windows Mobile Four. Nineteen. <laughs> that's about what two thousand year two thousand. <laughs> You'd always skim so, it across the river. I'm hoping that I can find somewhere on the net. It's it's a Samsung made device. It's a Samsung um, SPP R two hundred. So I'm hoping on the net somewhere I can find the hack for it and open it up and turn it. Mm. It's just a Bluetooth device. It's just uses Bluetooth, but they've got proprietary codes. So I'm hoping I can find a way to clear the codes. Mm, how crazy is that? Well, look, I couldn't I'll, believe that. I've got, I've got a, I've got a story here, a little bit of, bit of fun, I, I suppose, for the, for, for, for the minute. It's uh, the Google graveyard. Now, this has been produced by some newspaper. Computer World brought this out through the week. It's uh, fifteen products that Google has killed off. Now, some of these you've probably heard of. So let's have a look. First of all, start with the notebook. I love the notebook. Oh, notebook was fantastic. Idiots. So, yeah, I don't know what they what what do they think they're doing with Google Notebook? Um, yeah, after killing the service in I September. I love that product. That was such a good product. Yeah, I know, I know. Google allowed users to migrate all of their notebook documents into Google Docs. Thanks very much. Whoopie doo. Yeah, yeah, and it's pus. Yeah, <laughs> that's right. Uh, what's this one? Google Friend Connect. Oh, yeah, this that, the, that this was, was great. The, right. Was this the precursor to Google Plus? Uh, I never saw sort this. of. Friend, yeah, friend, it was. Uh, and Tron. Wave. Remember Google Wave? That's coming. Friend Connect. Yeah. <laughs> friend Connect was sort of a an attempt at. You know how they got their circles in Google Plus? It was sort of uh-huh. a very early attempt at that. Uh, okay. Yeah, so Google you Friend. Know what Google's <laughs> biggest problem is it, it's not their idea. Some of these ideas are pretty good. It's their graphical interface. It's so. <laughs> Yeah. You know, 1998, it doesn't Engineers. get everyone, if people can't get excited about something so utilitarian and boring. Yeah, it is. It's bo- everything they do is boring. But uh, now I'll just give you the, the proper definition of what Friend Connect was. Friend Connect enabled users to embed social networking features to their websites and was killed for all but blogger sites this March. Google didn't make the announcement without plugging Google Plus once again. Um, yeah. Next one. 
Well, I don't think people go. Well, I spend too much time on there. There's 15 of them. But we've. Uh, we'll oh, no, keep going. We, we'll just flick them through, but we won't chat Pick about Nick. everything. The ones I haven't heard of, I'll, I'll, <laughs> I think they're a I bit more heard, obscure. I haven't heard of that. Yeah, Google acquired photo editing service Picnic in March 2010 with big hopes, but by January 2012 it announced that it was shutting down the services and assigning those who came with it to develop Super Google fast. Plus photo editing services. Jeez, Google Plus, that's the focus. So Picnic. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. Look at all the money they've spent. These people from Picnic must be going, thanks thanks for my 20 million. Now you closed me down. I'm yeah. out of a job. Oh, what a shame. Yeah. yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm moved, I've, they've moved to the Cayman Islands. Yeah, exactly. So, <laughs> he wrote the, the Wikipedia page. <laughs> That's right. Uh, Needle. Google had trouble finding a user base for Needle-based data management platform. Oh, that's a shame. That looks all right. It, it acquired. If you're a geek. It acquired. It's from, very hard to find a user base for something that you don't advertise. That people yeah. don't know about. Correct. <laughs> yeah. So Look at Grand Central Station. It acquired from ITA Software in April 2011, so it's only like a year old, and they've knocked it on the head. Oh, my God. Yeah. No one knew about it, though. I didn't, I didn't, I've never heard of it. Okay, here's, here comes another one. What have we got here? Oh, they're, they're all ones I haven't heard of. Social Graph API. Oh, that's probably something different. It's an API, yeah. Yeah, Google said in January 2012 that its project to provide an API to make information about social connections between web users available to app developer but wasn't experienced the kind of adoption we'd like. Okay, that's finished. That died. Uh, OnePass, I've heard of it. OnePass was an attempt at solving a complex problem. No, no. Establishing a, a platform to help publishers accept payments for online news. Google, oh, yeah. Yeah, in April 2012, go. Google announced it was exploring other options. Look at their graphics, though. How boring. Yeah. <laughs> What's Google related? That was, that was probably the best bit of that program. This guy looks like he's just shot something out of his... <laughs> Bottom. Google related. <laughs> he looks like he's doing a dump. <laughs> and there's there's one of the dumps floating in the air next, next to him in front of him. So Google related. And it's blue. <laughs> Google related <laughs> was an experiment to try to connect search engine users with more extensive information. Google acknowledged that it wasn't showing great adoption, but added that they were still no believe in the in the uh, 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 shut no down. No one knew about it. No, no. And here comes another. Well, we we don't go to the labs that often. Google video. Yeah, we all knew that was dying. We all knew that was getting killed yeah, off. Yeah, that's all YouTube. Well, they had now, YouTube now, didn't they? So, but that that Google video that wasn't too bad actually. That had a few. That returned a few good searches. Um, but that's finished. What do we got here? That's why I have to admit, if you want good videos that aren't on YouTube, you have to use Bing. Uh, yeah, yeah Bing is great. Bing is good for videos. I'll give it that. Uh, Greg, are you still there? Is that what he? Greg probably does that. Um, Google Chat Back. Never heard of it. Talk Back. Chat. Google Talk, talk Chat, chat Back. back. It, it well, that's like, integrated. That's Google Tor. Right, okay. Slash Hangouts now. Yeah, yep. So that we can... Yes, that's, that's right. It's part of Hangouts. That's Correct. understandable. Um, I Google. Why are they getting rid of this? I use this. I Google has yes. seen some success over the years accounting for 20... This is my homepage. For 20% mm. of all visits to the Google's homepage. Uh, however, Google admitted last week that the need for I Google has eroded over time. It will now be retired November 13. Oh, that's a little way away. Uh, yeah. And it's being retired from smartphones as of the end of next month, I think. Yeah, I think you might be right. I don't know why. what's wrong with that. But anyway, that's all of them. Oh, that's what? all right. You know what? They shouldn't get that's rid of them. That's not all they of them. Should, they should just sell it to Microsoft. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, There's Microsoft. What about uh, Grand Central Station? That one went away. Grand uh, Central, Oh, yeah. this was only a 15. It wasn't, yeah, it wasn't the that's whole. That's what I mean. There's, that, if um, you think about it, there's heaps of They them. integrated that into Google, into Google Phone. Which is, uh, you know, the free phone Which calls and whatnot. In the, you can, still can't get it here because mm. the telcos won't go for it. No. Yeah, it's rubbish. It's rubbish. Uh, all right. Well, it's best we have a little listen to Garth because he's he's come in. Um, we'll see what he's up to this week. And where where is he? There he is. And look, I think he goes. Oh, he bangs on a bit this week. He goes for his four minute episode. Garth, what's going oh, on? Oh God, I'm going to read a book. <laughs> no. <laughs> All right. So uh, we'll cross over to Garth and see what he's on about this week. If he, if we can hear him. Oh, we might start that again. And I'll turn the volume up. How's that? There you go. Garth's iOS reviews for this week. Now, not so much of a, a review this week, Garth, but more of a maybe a how-to. A little how-to. And also, um, I'd love to get some feedback from the, from the listeners as to how they do this. All right. Um, once you start downloading a few apps, another one, another one, another one, they build up and you end up, before you know it, you've got heaps of pages with different apps on them. And, of course, you can arrange those, you know, touch and hold till they start to wobble. 
and then you can move them between pages. And stack them. And stack them, stick them, put one app, move it on top of another, and iOS will automatically create a folder. And if you moved a, you know, cooking app on top of another cooking app, you'll end up with a lifestyle folder or whatever it is. It'll automatically give it a name. Sweet. You can, of course, go in there and rename that. So I think, Glenn, you were talking about putting all your Angry Birds together in the one folder. and That's right. I put all my Angry Birds together because <laughs> I've, I've got, oh, the little bloke loves it. He, he's yeah. got Rio, Space, and I don't know how it happens, but every time, every now and then, like, you say, oh, yeah, you can play the Angry Birds on the iPad, and then 10 minutes later you'll come out, everything's all, the iTunes app store is loaded up with a new game. I don't even know how he gets there. He goes, can you buy this for can us? Can you buy me this one? Yeah. There'll be a link in the game he was in. To right. take them to the next game. Oh, yeah, that'd be right. <laughs> and a lot of the apps will put links in there. So then Thank goodness for passwords. Exactly. <laughs> but remember, while we're on that actually with the passwords, remember for 15 minutes after you put it in, you can go back in and buy more stuff without putting it in again. Now, you can, you can turn that timer off or adjust that timer? I haven't tried. Mm. So just, just but I don't know that you can. So by I default, which everyone would be on, it'd be yes, it'll be yes, fifteen, 15 minutes. minutes. Yep. Now look, I've got a. Oh, sorry, keep going with your home screen. Yeah. Okay. So so what? Just recently, I reset mine back to factory default. Don't ask me why I did that, and I really wish I hadn't. <laughs> and I could have restored from a backup, but I thought, yep. hang on, I'll start again and reorganise yep. it. So what I typically do myself is to put the first, obviously, all the apps I use on the front page. A lot of other, other apps I use fairly often on the next page, on the second page. And then on page three, I have a whole heap of folders full of like all the navigation apps, are, all the games, all of this, all yep. of that, and organize them all alphabetically and stick them in there. Yep. So that's what I normally do. What do other people do and why do you do it? Well, yeah, well I'll tell you so, what, I, yeah, what tell I do. Me. Mine's been pretty much all over the place. Uh, I've only yep. just started... Uh, hiding them up because uh, look I had organised it so they weren't stacked none of them were stacked yep. but I had like a page of games then I had a swipe page of news yep. page of video watching programs and all that sort of stuff but look you can and e another way of, of organising your, your home screens and everything is actually through iTunes you yes. can <laughs> uh, just jump into the iTunes and into the apps and I'll show you a little bit of a picture here right. and and yeah and it's just a lot easier to drag around and go to different screens it's quicker and easier yeah yeah it's quicker and easier than holding than holding that thing down holding the app down and yeah. wait till it wobbles and then trying to move it from page to page it is if you can see anyway this is actually that part of iTunes is not accessible for the vision impaired people it's just you have to do it on the phone yeah. oh okay so, okay yeah. uh yeah and so but also if you if you can get into this into this uh, way of doing things uh you got you can uh, take you can delete things like or or uh, disable them and enable them quite easily delete the delete the apps from there as well yeah, yeah. that's yeah. right that's right so in fact, and the way you have it, that's how I have my iPad set up with a page, you know, one page has got, you know, books and this or, and the same sort of thing that you described. Yeah. But my phone is the one that I had, how I originally described. And, um, yeah, I reset it. Now I've got 11 pages full of 16 apps on every page. Jeez. <laughs> oh, and it's going to be a monumental effort to put it all back together. Yeah, I reckon. If I can be bothered. So, hey, guys, send me an email, garth at aussietechheads.com.au. Just let me know how you do it. If you have a favourite way and, you know, if you have a way that think you think works. Mm. Um, one trick that I know a lot of people do is put a folder into their dock. So that's something people don't think of often. Oh, yes. So right. you can stick a folder. One of the dock icons can be a folder. So right. there's a whole heap of apps you often go to. Stick that folder into your dock. There we go. There's another little trick there. Sweet. All right. All right. Good stuff. Thanks, Garth. And no uh, we'll, we'll see you back here next week. Night-night. All right, he's full of good little tricks and, and tips, uh, is our man Garth. So uh, if you've got any suggestions for him on how to tidy up his his homepage easily, yeah, send him an email. Oh, I'll tell you that right now, Garth, if you're listening, just create folders. Yeah, so do a folder. and uh, Do a folder and drag, you know, social, finance, utilities, you know, boring crap. Mm. You can name anything you want. Hmm, that's right. All right, now let's move on to what else have we got? Oh, um, what else have we got? You got anything else, Eric? Uh, let me check. What do you got? You got anything, William? Yeah, I've got a couple here. Um, Go for it. The new stats have just been released. New market research has released the new sale, um, sales of Android phones across Europe and also Australia. And it shows Australian sales for mobile phones running Android is at 56.9%. 
up 20.5% from the same time last year. Um, so basically, <clears throat> as, uh, the 20% increase has come at the expense of phones running Symbian, RIM, and iOS. So basically, um, the table I've got here quickly shows that... Um, see if I can do this on the fly and see how much I can break all at once. If I quickly <laughs> just go here, <laughs> oh, look out. you can see that uh, the um, there's a chart here f from this time last year and this year. And basically, um, I'll make that a little bit bigger, see if it's bigger ever. Um, last year, Symbian was 20% of the Australian market. This year, it's down to... 4%, so it's lost, well, actually, there was 20.8%, it's down to 3.8%, so it's lost 17%. RIM has lost 2.1%, down to 0.1%. Well. I, <laughs> iOS uh, has lost 64 down to 30.5%. Win7 Mobile has Gosh. actually gained 2.7%, up to 48 Um The old Windows Mobile has gained somehow. <laughs> up to 1%. Um, Android has gone from 36.4% to 56.9%. It's probably so it's a lot. Gone up. It's probably people just pulling them out of the cupboard, turning them on to see if they still work. And they still work. <laughs> no, these are, uh, <laughs> them back. These are sales. Oh, okay. Mm, crazy. Um, Maybe a lot of people and, um, bought one of those thermal printer things that you've got, Will. <laughs> <laughs> That's probably what it was. I'm probably part of that 1%. That's right. Um, now, so, think... yeah, so that was quite amazing that, you know, in this country, iOS is 30% and Android's 57 mm. so. so, Eric, you you had a lot of stats there for shipments. Is that the same sort of stuff? I had similar to that, but it was more focused on um, the RIM. Right. Oh, and, yeah, uh, RIM and Apple hang shipments. On, let me just get to it. Let me get to it. Sorry about this. So you got uh, yeah, Rim uh, Research in Motion held its annual shareholders meeting at its BlackBerry devices. Here we go. Here we go. Continue to lose market share. Blah blah blah. Here we blah. go. Here we go. I'll start in the, the quarter ending uh, March May two thousand and eleven for Rim. They and I'll go up right. Yeah. So each quarter. So in May they had thirteen million sold thirteen million BlackBerry phones, which is still a lot considering it's crap. Yeah. By August 2011, 10 million. Yep. November 2011, 14 million. They must have released a new model. In March 2012, so a few months ago, 11 million. Yep. June, 7.8 million. Yeah. You know, they're just dropping like flies. Yep. Yep. Well, now, Apple, on the other hand, starting yeah. March quarter 2011, I'll just do the iPhones. There's iPads in here too, but I'll just read the iPhones. Uh, nearly 19 million iPhones. March 2011, June 2011, 20.3 uh, million iPhones, September 17 million iPhones, and then December last year, 37 million, that would be the Christmas rush, 37 mm, million iPhones, and March this year, 35 million iPhones. Mm. And that's, I see, that's quite a big move. And I see the iPad is about to be released in China as well, or the yes, iPad or 3. Yes, that will go off the planet. Yeah, that'll go mental. And, yeah, well, uh, you know, well, maybe not because you, you might get, you know, for every one person that buys one um, and sends it off to some factory over there, they'll they'll counterfeit a thousand. Yeah, true. Now, so, you know. <laughs> and uh, you've also got news on Dropbox. Yes, I have. Yeah. Dropbox has doubled the storage available for the paying users. Online storage company Dropbox is offering more space to its paying customers. Drops, uh, blah, 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 blah. Dropbox has 50 million users. Said Tuesday it will now offer uh, bigger storage discounts for the same price. Those paying $10 a month or $99 a year will get 100 gigabytes instead of 50 gigabytes. There you go. That's not too bad. That's all right. Um, and some of us were fortunate enough who were, who were paying for the, I think it used to be the old 20 or 25 gig plan it used to be uh no whatever it's three dollars or four dollars a month or something uh, we're fortunate enough to receive an email saying thanks thanks and for your support for such a long period of time you may now keep your 20 or 25 gig free dropbox for free mm. unless of course you want to upgrade to another plan well, that's not bad so, yeah, that's all right. 
So even though, you know, I've paid for it for the last you know, couple of years, I've, uh, yeah, I've now got it free. So what, um, <laughs> Well, I think Dropbox is good. Like, I've got the dro- Google Drive, uh, but yep, I, I suppose well. I've, Dropbox has still got a place in my heart. It's still, look, I just find <laughs> Dropbox so much easier it is easy. than anything I've ever used. You know, yep. Microsoft yep. iCloud and, you know, and, and Microsoft's got its SkyDrive and Google Drive and all that stuff. Mm. But Dropbox, it feels like it's a directory on your drive. Well, and it that's is. what I like yep. about it. Yeah, because it what, is. Because well, it is, but that's what I mean. But it's syncing up at the same time. It yeah, just makes that's it right. it's so seamless. Because it's, because it's a physical directory, you can just drag and drop it into the directory and it will up, upload it. So yeah, mm. just, I just love it. Yeah. I've got 7.8, I've got 8 gigs on it free because you know how you send invites to people yep. and every time they sign up, you get an extra allocation. So mm. over about four years, uh, with the invites I've sent, I've got eight, up to eight gigs free. So that's that's, that's not bad. Mm. See, I've got it's, – it's funny, though. The Android integration of Dropbox isn't great. The Android integration on Box is great, but the Windows user experience isn't good. So it's sort of it, – you know, it's like G Drive. Android integration is good. Windows not so good. So it's sort of dependent on what your major device is, depends on what you'll use, I think. Because I signed up early to Box, I've got a – I think it's a 50-gig plan right. uh, for free. Um which I use mainly on my Android device, but when I'm on at home on my computer, I mainly use my Dropbox. And actually, right. there is an app that allows Box and Dropbox to talk to each other. So oh, that's not bad. <clears throat> that helps. But yeah, um, yeah Dropbox. Speaking of like, I was sorry, say, yeah, uh, Dropbox to me, like it works. It works really well because, um, like, Mark's doing his show every week called the Den, and I, I upload it to YouTube. You tunes for mm-hmm. him. And yeah, I, I'm just sitting here doing minding my own business, and then it goes ping, new new file in your Dropbox. It's his show. It's on. It's on my computer already because it's synced up to the drive on the computer. I just upload. It's great. I love it. I love it. Mm. So you got a shared right. drive. Yeah. Yeah. Love it. Yeah, that's what I like about it. You can share drives privately with people, and you know, it's it's or just can- brilliant. Post a link, like you can make a make it public with a link or something like that. So, yep. yeah, if I've actually had friends on Facebook who have had problems and wanted a particular program or whatever, and I just throw it up onto Dropbox and make a link public and and let them access it that way, and I'm not have to worry that anything else can happen because all that happens when you click on the link is you download the file. So, mm-hmm. and um, all right, so Eric, did you have anything else? Anything else? Well, I've got a couple more. Got? So um, you go for it. Uh, all right. I oh, will. Jenny. I was going to say I got a, a couple of quick stories. One is we cannot let today pass because today is the Rolling Stones' fiftieth birthday. Oh, well done. That's right. So, so they celebrate with their walking frames. <laughs> <laughs> Charlie Watts, Keith Richards, Mick Jagger, and Ron Wood uh, started on July twelfth, nineteen sixty-two. That's bloody amazing. Made yeah. their stage debut at the Marquis, Marquis, a basement club under a cinema in London. Uh, the film The Day of the Triffids was playing above and below. The young British boys were in their late teens, were playing the blues. Uh, they basically earned five pound each and there was 20 attendees. Um, sorry, there was 100 attendees. And Mick Jagger was quoted as saying not long after that uh, concert, he was quoted as saying, oh, we'll probably be around for a year or two. Good for him. <laughs> so. Uh, there was a fascinating documentary on uh, on Mick Jagger about two years ago on, you know, the History Channel. And um, i tell you what, he's a pretty interesting guy. Pretty interesting guy. Did you hear the story? Oh, he's, look at this bloke. Look at him here. Did you hear the story? <laughs> <laughs> did you hear the story about they they washed their blood? Did you hear? No, that? did not hear that story. Oh, there's so many. Yeah, it's all rubbish, I reckon. Stories. But there was like they they had like they they laid down or whatever. They had the blood taken out of their body, washed, and then then oh, si- yeah. siphoned back. They in. went through the uh, through the machine they use for people. So they, had, they basically had a transfusion of their own blood. Yeah, with their own blood. Yeah. <laughs> But clean well, version. That's pretty stupid. <laughs> well, they smoke in a pot at the same time. I'd say, I would say yes. Keith, I think Keith Richards was probably smoking his old man's ashes at that point. Oh, that's right. That's, that's right. another one. Without, knowing, without realizing it. <laughs> that's right. Now, now, have you ever wondered about why we use the QWERTY keyboard? Well, apparently, no. 
anyway. <laughs> no. I don't care. I like it. Don't change I, it. I actually prefer the Dvorak keyboard, keyboard, but nobody ever uses it. No, well, there's a guy in Brisbane... And John Lambie, who has devised his own keyboard, and uh, but anyway, just a little bit of a bit of a thing about the uh, the QWERTY keyboard. Now you all know when I mean the QWERTY keyboard. For those that you don't know, it's the normal keyboard that's sitting in front of you now. A QWERTY because the top line is Q W E R T Y. So there you go. Now and what's the longest word you can spell on it on no. the top line? QWERTY. No. <laughs> um, I, don't I don't know. Typewriter. Yeah, okay. Oh, very All good. on the top line. Yeah, right. Which, ironically, is why they were invented. Go figure. Hmm. Well, that's right. <laughs> but anyway, the QWERTY keyboard more than 25 years ago. And so the reason why it was designed the way it is is because because the, the vowels, if you've noticed, they're, they're all, if you're, ty- if you're touch type, they are pretty much all the vowels use your little finger. And it's and it was designed like this so that the keys wouldn't jam in the typewriter. Mm. It was jet, so the keys were uh, way apart from each other, so they wouldn't jam. So the, the the tradition has continued on. But there's other keyboards, as Will has mentioned, the Dvorak keyboard, which apparently you get used to one of those little fellas and you can fly. Oh yeah, you can I really actually fly. Learned, I learnt on the Dvorak keyboard because Mum used to uh, actually work in the old um, type typing. What do I call them? Typing bays, whatever they were? Typing pool. pool. Yeah, she used to work in one of those. And back in the old days, they used to use Dvorak keyboards. And when I first learned to type, she was teaching me to touch type Dvorak keyboard. <laughs> yeah, right. Not knowing that it would be completely useless these days. Well, that's, but... that's the funny thing. If whatever you get introduced <laughs> to is what you get used to, and mm. you don't see anything wrong with it. Well, apparently no. the Dvorak keyboard, you, you can absolutely fly with it. But anyway... Oh, yeah. But there's a guy in Brisbane, this, um, what was his name? John Lambie, I think his name was. He's from some university somewhere. That's him. <laughs> and now he's, uh, he's designed his own little keyboard. Now he's a little. It looks like he needs one. Quick little demo there as I read. <laughs> he needs to do something with those hands. <laughs> he has been designed for optimum use. <laughs> So it's been designed for optimum use with just one finger or to, or to split itself into two to make two easier to make typing easier with two thumbs. So the keyboard is in um, alphabetical order. Yeah, that's Mobile have... phone, anyone? <laughs> yeah, hello. It's not exactly like he invented this. <laughs> is no. he a monkey? Any web page keyboard? Uh, maybe the on-screen keyboard in Windows when you set it to alphabetical? I'm sorry. But no, here we go. Yeah. He's, just, he's got it. It's coming up here. I did, I did actually have this video... Um, to, to load up at the desired time, but it didn't work. Um, so Lambie pointed out, so while this is doing what it's doing, Lambie pointed out that the QWERTY keyboard was originally designed yeah, to slow people down, blah, blah, blah. He's developing a keyboard for Android phones. Apple and Microsoft will not let developers change the keyboard of the smartphone, uh, which should be ready for download as an app between August and September. Now, Lambie is targeting developing countries such as India and the Philippines where people have not grown up with QWERTY in their homes, but are buying up mm. smartphones that have been made in countries such as China on the cheap. So I don't know. I've never. Um, Android phones will let you change the keyboard. By default, they have QWERTY, Alphabetical, and Dvorak. Um, you can customize your own keyboard. You can make it have configuration you want. You can also use something like Swipe, where you don't actually type. You just sort of run your thumb over the keyboard and, and the desired good. word pops up. So, uh, yeah. Sorry, oh. dude, but been done. Yeah, I reckon. <laughs> yeah. not give me anything new there. No, nah, all right. We'll get rid of him. Yeah, <laughs> you're gone, dude. He looks like Tony Martin. Yeah, a little where's bit. Mick Mal- where's Mick Malloy? But he's obviously, <laughs> he's, obviously got, he's obviously seen a niche. He's been working on it for, um, for a while. He's seen a niche in the market. So, we, oh, we'll wish him all the luck. I'm sorry, but if you've been working on that for a while, yeah. I hope you had a second job. <laughs> yeah. All right. It's not – I mean, look, the, the only reason I'm sceptical and good on him for having another idea, but the problem is it's not a new idea. It's something that's been done. It's something that you can do now with apps on the Android phone. And as you said, Microsoft and Apple won't let you change your keyboard anyway. So that's right. That's I don't right. Really... Android won't either. Yeah, they do. Oh, yeah, but for the swipe thing – no, no, you but can, you, you can, can change actually, anything you want. Yeah, I mean, you can. Okay. Well, with an app, you can change it. Or default, it has three. It has Dvorak, Qwerty, and uh, oh, okay. alphabetical. 
and it also has customization options. So if you go landscape mode, like showing on the on the picture there, you can modify your keyboard to ergonomic, which is basically that. So mm. yeah, Take a bit to get I, used to. No, I don't know. If he brings it out as an app, he'll do great. If he tries to implement it independently, especially now, given that so many things are moving away from a physical keyboard. I mean, it's almost to the point now where I come home and try to touch my monitor to do something, you know, like mm. I don't know how much longer keyboards are going to be around anyway. Well, good news is that Angry Birds Rovio has launched their new game. It's called The Amazing Alex. Yeah. <laughs> so, oh, good God. They're running <laughs> out of ideas. Enjoyable. No, they actually like, they bought this idea. So uh, really? un- unlike the other games, Amazing Alex began its life outside the firm. It was originally known as Casey's Contraptions, a physics-based game in which players had to help the lead character free his toys. It was released in 2011 by Noel Lopez, a California-based independent game developer. Uh, blah, blah, blah. He received positive reviews, which compared to the task involved to the outlandish machines drawn by the cartoonist. Blah, blah, blah. However, the title never became a hit, and the developer sold their intellectual property to Rovio earlier this year, following which it was removed from the Apple iOS store. I'm um, sorry. Uh, if they want a game where you have to construct things, bring back the Incredible Machine. Somebody needs to make a port of the Incredible Machine. That was awesome. That was the original physics-based place to something and it does something game. Um, and there's nothing there. There are a few games similar on Android, but there's nothing like it. There's nothing with that sort of feel. It just had a I don't know usability about it. Mm. Now, uh, Eric, are we up to your bill shock? Bill shock. Here we go. Let me just get the paper shock out of the way. <laughs> Trees. Bill shock. <clears throat> bill shock code set to save 1.5 billion. I don't believe this, by the way, because I think there are too many stupid people out there to even realise there is a code. Um, Australians spend, uh, according to this article, spend $1.5 billion more than they need to each year on mobile phone bills. Some, something new rules, this is badly written, something new rules aim, some new rules aim to prevent by ensuring plans are worded more clearly that the word cap is avoided. This is so what? badly written. Where is this from? The, My God, the Australian. who's the journalist? This is pathetic. Where did you get this? this Sydney Morning Herald, Sydney Morning what, a, Herald. What, a, what a surprise. Um, the uh, the uh, two Telecommunications Consumer Protection Code announced today by the telco regulator, ACMA, put together by the telcos, blah, 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 blah. How complicated is this? Will act as a rule book for telcos such as Telstra and Optus on how to engage with their customers in a way that will eliminate bill shock. I've never had bill shock. No. Um, um I don't know about you guys, but I don't know what else they can do to make it that clear that when they say you're paying forty nine dollars a month and you're allowed and you get four hundred and fifty dollars worth of calls, yeah. And if you go over that four fifty, you start paying one dollar a minute. Yeah. I don't know how hard that is to understand and look, that they have to make it any simpler. Well, and also mobile phones have been around for a while now. Same with those plans, and you'd have to be living under a rock. Not to know that this is what happened. It's not so much right. that the um, it's not that it's most telcos make it very difficult to check your current usage. Um, that's even, a different. That's a different thing. I agree with that. They should make it very easy for yeah, you to log in and go that there it is. A lot of that's what's come into it because, for example, sometimes a one three hundred number, for example, may not be included in that cap, or it may yeah. be included that cap up to a certain amount. So if you're on the phone to Centrelink for fourteen hours. Then you might actually go over your cap, and, but you've only made one phone call, and you're not necessarily thinking about it when you're going to make another one. So they need to have some sort of implementation where there's not this. I was on the Telstra website the other night looking at my mobile phone, and it said your data usage may take between 48 to 96 hours to update. Yeah. Well, that's handy. I need to know now how much data I've got left. That's right, because uh, I've got a week to go, and I'm a bit sus. Yeah. So you know, it's. It's, it's, but you I know what know I if... think. You know I think it's so. I, this is what I get from Telstra now, and you might get the same thing, Will. On based on the data, I will get an SMS when I've used eighty percent of my my allocation, right? 
Now, mm-hmm. why can't they send you an SMS when you use 80% of your voice allocation or your cap, for instance? See, I, don't, I don't get that with my data. I get it with my data. Yeah, I, I get it with mine. Because Son- Sonia went over, she used um, like a mag over her cap. And did, it, she, did she have to sell a car? It was $4.50, <laughs> I think. Oh, that's not, not bad. <laughs> did you have is but, your is your um, big pond account? Oh, is your Optus actual Optus account redirected to your normal email? Because they're probably Telstra. Sa- oh, you with Telstra now? Oh, is this on your no, mobile. Our, our mobile also with Telstra. Oh, okay. Um, right. uh, yeah, well, well, you should. But even with the see, even with the home internet, I don't. I actually I get a email at ninety five percent. I get an email too at 80, 90, and 95. Well, I've, got an, I've, I've, got, I've only check. reached that once. Which well, doesn't it, help because you go to check it and it, does, it says it takes up to 96 hours to update and you've still got you know half of your cap left. <laughs> so, but you know what? I think though that their back end, those emails are based on what they see at the back end, which is not necessarily available at the front end, the consumer end. So hmm. you're right. I get an email that says you've used 80% and I log in and it says, no, I haven't. I've only used 50%. Yeah. But that back end is more accurate, so I always rely on those emails rather than the user interface. But see, that's, I think if you get you shouldn't. Uh, you shouldn't. I think should this be, is where you're right. You shouldn't. This is where this laws coming in to sort this this mess out because people are complaining complaining that they're doing what they can. They've checked their caps. They've logged on. They've checked how much they've used. They've tried to do everything they can do, and they're still going over because everything's so useless. Mm. Yeah. Well, well, there's got to be some integration. I agree with that. I don't get anywhere um, near my cap, use, so I'm you can't happy. Use, sorry, Glenn, but you can't use third-party monitors now. Like on my internet connection, I used to have a little usability thing that sat in the corner of my, you know, on my desktop, and just told me how much data I used. Mm. Yeah, but Optus has blocked that now. So right, okay. right. Yeah. Well, that if they if they enact. A law that says no. Well, you're allowed to. You 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 should allow third party checkers if you're not going to supply your own. Um, yeah. I think that's fair. But that's right. generally, though, you know, unless you're a, a teenager who's never had a phone until they're 18 and you don't really know much about it, and, and this is what really these laws are, are, are for to protect the, the the naive and the inexperienced. But generally, I think that's pretty clear. At, for me, it is anyway. You know, I'm, and I don't think I'm a super brain. That it's pretty clear when someone says four fifty cap, and if you go over, you pay a dollar a minute. Yeah, but th- so don't forget. Then, as I said, different things come into that, especially with data. Like a friend of mine has Facebook is free as long as she doesn't click on the pictures because the cl- the pictures that she views in the app are free. But if she clicks on them and it downloads them, it counts as a data usage. Yeah, so that's a bit dodgy. That's what I mean. There's just Stupid implementations that need to be sorted out. Mm. Whether or not a law's got to be passed, I don't know, but something has certainly got to be done. Mm. Well, they've done yeah, the yeah. yeah. I, I get what you're saying. They just they've got to fine tune what it's. A lot of this stuff's already there in their back end and their front end, but what they've got there existing has to be fine tuned to be more consumer friendly. Is that's probably what you're saying? Especially when you're dealing with older people who all they want to do is pick up their phone and make a phone call. <laughs> they yeah. don't want to have to. Well, they should you know, get a bigger like cap. Dad, he's dad's on a, <laughs> I don't know what he's on a fifteen dollar a month or something, you know. And ninety percent of the time, it's fine. Last month, he got a two hundred and fifty dollar phone bill because wow. he didn't hang up when he called a friend, and his phone was on the charger and it stayed connected for like you know eighteen hours or something. So eighteen oh, hours, jeez, you know. Actually, I've, I've had that. I've had a friend of mine had something like that happen too. Yeah, the phones were connected for a while. It's crazy. Yeah. Just both ends didn't hang yeah. up. It was crazy. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. But anyway, that's that's good. Well, hopefully, no more bill shock, and uh, we can all we can all rest easy tonight. And, uh, <laughs> Ironically, my dad's name is Bill, so that was quite funny. Oh, he yeah. has to change his name to Shock. <laughs> <laughs> change his last name to Shock. <laughs> now, uh, any more boys? Any more? Will Eric? I'm I've good. Got- I got you one go, quick Will. story about. Uh, I don't know if you guys have, are aware about Chrome OS. It's basically a it's it's virtually a cloud based operating system. It's good for small laptops, netbooks, things like that, where there's no processing power because everything's stored on the cloud. Well, Chrome OS has just launched version twenty, 
uh, it's their stable release. Uh, and it, one of the main features that's implemented is Google Drive is fully implemented now, um, online and offline, so mm -hmm. that obviously Google Docs and everything's available on the system. Google Drive is implemented because most of these systems don't have a lot of built-on storage. They're very low-end systems. They're almost like um, the OLPCs, the one laptop per child sort of system, so they're very low spec. So now they've integrated things like, um, yeah, Drive to allow you to store things off off site. Um, there's Pepper Flash, which is like a lightweight version of Adobe Flash. Um, so it's really good. You can check it out if you if you if you've got an old netbook sitting around. I'm actually going to throw uh, Chrome OS onto my EPC. I did have it on there, but the um, Google Drive integration was horrible, so I took it off. So I might throw this one on, and, and we'll see how now, we go. Now, have, have any of you guys uh, read in terms and conditions? Like, if, if do, do any of these online storage uh, spaces, do, do they actually expire? Like, how much data would be out there that's stored that's not even used anymore because people have moved on or people have got another account? They're, what they normally do, there is a, a limit, like an, on a, an inactive account limit, um, so if you haven't accessed your account for, let's say it's 12 months, they'll send you an email, they'll try to call you, they'll send you another email, and six months later, they'll send you another email, say, if you don't do something, we'll shut it down um, because they need the space or whatever. Mm. I've had it with Hotmail account. Um, yeah, that's that's right, Will. That's correct. Yeah. Yeah, I've had it happen with Hotmail account where I had a, a Hotmail and a whatever their storage thing is. SkyDrive? Um, yeah, attached to that Hotmail account. And I had the same thing. They sent me emails for months saying they are going to shut it down. I didn't check my Hotmail account for about 18 months. <laughs> I don't know and, anyone who's um, still got a Hotmail account. I do. Oh, I you do. girl. I know a lot of people. <laughs> who I actually still have one, which you need to have one. For, I've just, got a Yahoo one too, but you need it for – there are just some websites that only use Yahoo login. Really? Um, yeah. What, what Bing? <laughs> Holy so, Julie's. Yeah, it was horrible. Actually, I had to get a uh, a uh, Hotmail account so I could get an a yeah a Bing a um AOL account. Well, I've got the I've got a yeah, Hotmail account, so if I have to provide an email address to a site that I don't care about, I just want a free yeah. download. I'll just um give it give the Hotmail account. But it's. It's funny, you know, the people who aren't in the tech sector predominantly have Hotmail accounts as their free accounts. Um, it, it's anybody who's remotely techie probably has Gmail, probably yep, because yep. they have an Android yep. phone or, or, or they've got like their own anyway. exchange server. Yeah. <laughs> um, well, you know but, why? You know why I've got a Hotmail account? Tell me, Glenn. Oh, I, I opened it in like '98. Mm. Oh right! Yeah, oh, that, you want to keep it? That was the oh, not not particularly. That's just the first one I've ever opened. It was my first sort of like email online email account. So and, you're a bit of a sentimentalist then? Yeah, well, I'm like, oh, why? Why I don't use it except for what I've said just previously. But why my not? first email account was an AussieMail dot com. Mm. Yeah, I've had one of those. <laughs> you know, the I've one had an Aussie that you email could buy the, the little. Actually, you could buy the little device thing that you used to hold up to the public pay phone and punch your code in. You'd get your email sent to you over the phone. <laughs> Do you remember the, a, 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 an ISP called Dialix? Do you remember them? No. D-I-A-L-I-X. That was my first email address, Dialix. <laughs> yeah, right. All that the... was 19... Oh, hang on. This is when you were paying by the byte. All the way from Dial up, Scar, paying right? by the byte, and it's 1994. Oh, dear. And it, you could go through twenty dollars in five minutes. It was <laughs> bloody expensive. So tell me, tell me, Will. I mean, uh, Eric, are you going to uh, watch the Shire? Is that? Is no. That a... <laughs> no. You know, yeah. So, so I have a very, I have a theory. Yeah. Garbage in, garbage out, <laughs> and I don't watch garbage. So you don't watch uh, Bingle either. No. Oh, she's an idiot. <laughs> oh, isn't she? I don't watch it either. What a waste of time. Well, a waste of bloody Jesus. How about yeah. uh, Mrs. Brown's boys? Very I've not, heard that's not safe good. for work. Very not safe for work, but incredibly hilarious. Yeah, BBC but... series just coming to Australia now. Check oh, it if it's out. BBC, it can't be that bad. I'm actually uh, watching um, <laughs> Downton Abbey right now. 
There's F bombs in it everywhere. Yeah, I've heard of that, Downtown Abbey. Yeah, oh, look, it's great. I've, I've heard of that. Downtown Abbey, yeah. That's all right. Uh, all right, well, we better we better wrap up. Eric, did you have any last any last ones? No, I'm good. I'm good. And Will, got any last ones? No, nothing important. Nothing right. that can't wait. Although they have to. I was just quickly reading a story that Think Geek has released a sonic screwdriver. I saw as that. a promotional tool. <laughs> it's it's uh, yeah. It's uh, it actually ninety nine dollars. Ninety nine dollars. I think it. I think it actually interfaces with your Connect or something, so you can use it as a TV remote. Something like wave it around <laughs> and <laughs> makes them. Yeah, <laughs> no, it's it's a multi multiple controller, so you can use it for controlling your TV, AV devices. And there you go. Like that. There you go. All <laughs> right. Well, on that high note of uh, great excitement, <laughs> uh, look. Uh, if if any look, it's a big 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 long show this week. Uh, so thanks for sticking around. Go to the um, Facebook page. I, I've re sort of added a few different pictures. Makes it look a little bit better. Go to the Facebook page. We're, let's have a l- bit of a like drive. Just uh, like us up, please, and uh, see if we can um, just increase the likes so there. Get, so you can get charged. That's right, <laughs> when I want to do an announcement. Yeah, so do the you know, Facebook page. Uh, so it's just uh, facebook.com forward slash Aussie Tech Heads, nice and easy. And uh, also don't forget the hosting at hosting.aussietechheads.com.au. If you ever wanted your own web page, now's the chance to get it from five ninety nine a month. Easy, easy, chicken feed, chicken feed. All right. That's nothing. That cup is. of coffee, come on. That is, that's right. And you can, uh, it's got over 250 script installers, like WordPress, Joomla, whatever you want to do, surveys, um, whatever you want, whatever you want, get involved. You can also just buy the uh, the actual .com if you wish and you can forward it to wherever you want as well, which is that's you know, right. the cheaper option. That's, but, right. that's whatever you want to do. <laughs> it's all it's all available there. So hosting.aussietechheads.com.au. So thanks for everyone. Uh, emails is Will, Glenn, Garth, and Eric at aussietechheads.com.au. Don't ask me for all the Twitters. I think it's uh, Mr. Tomkinson, Eric with a that's K, it. Franco, Aussie Tech Heads, and Garth underscore hum, I think. <laughs> hum? <laughs> hum. <laughs> just get him, just get Garth on the email for now. I have to confirm that. <laughs> but uh, so that's it. So yes, yeah, a big, big, long show. So it's a good one for the twelfth of July. So until next week, see you, Eric. See you, Will. See you, mate. See you, Will. See you next week. See you on the flip side, and we'll see you guys there as well. So until then, it's goodbye.